Welcome to the fourth and final part of the series on how to create a dynamic map in Excel. So hopefully you've watched parts one through three. If you haven't, I would suggest you uh, go back and start with part one. Um, each part goes over a particular component of the dynamic map. Part one, we talk about how to create the shapes, how to name the shapes. Uh, part two talks or discusses the dynamic metrics involved and then also uh, inputting the selector box. And then part three, we start to create the components necessary for the macro uh, for the dynamic shading. In this part, we will complete the process of developing a macro. Um, and if you're not familiar with macros, it's simply a, a program of steps that you tell Excel to follow. Um, and so we will do that uh, now. Uh, the first thing I need to do that I did not do in part three is uh, I need to name these uh, these color corresponding shading cells here, okay? And I went ahead and did it, but I'll just show you. So, for example, on this one, you're just going to name it whatever the corresponding uh, value is under class. So, in this case, you can see I named it class zero, class one, class three, four, and five. Okay, and so the reason you have to name those is because the part of the macro is going to, uh, based on the range of values you have here, will tell it to find class five here, and then go uh, go to the left and find the corresponding color in this box here, and then for any shape. And I'll show you the, the map in a second, but any shape with the value that corresponds with this, attribute the color to that, that shape, okay? So, or the country in this case. All right, so we've named all of these appropriately. And now we have the macro code itself. And so I've just copied and pasted it here from another uh, dynamic map that I created. And... Um, uh, don't worry, I'm going to go through each component, and actually we're going to have to change a couple of things uh, for this to be applicable to our uh, interactive map here. Um, the first thing you can do is, uh, so sub is always going to be in the formula, but um, you can always, this is basically the title, so you can change the title accordingly. And so let's change it to shading, all right? For this section here, so don't worry about I, keep I as it is, and for this section here, we need to show, tell it which rows to correspond to here, okay? So you need to tell it where your data starts, you have, so you have to skip any kind of headings you have in your data table, all right? So in this case, we're not going to start with one or two, we're going to start with three, okay? So we'll change this to a three. And this last number is basically telling it how far down to go, starting with three, how far down to go. In this case, we have three, four, five, six, and seven. So we'll tell it to go to row seven. And if you had more data down, so you had more countries or more states or whatever the case is, you're just going to go down as far as your list can, uh, uh, continues. All right? So we'll tell it to stop at row seven. All right. For range, act reg dot value, you can keep that the same. And again, act reg is this value here. For range, and currently it's set to sheet one, it says exclamation point and A. We need to change that, okay? Our data does start in column A, and that's why it's important. Uh, the, the more things you keep similar to what I'm showing you here, the less things you have to change in the uh, macro uh, uh, formula, okay? So our data uh, does start in A, so we're going to keep this A there. That's fine. But this portion here before the exclamation point is telling it which tab to go to. And you notice we don't have a sheet one tab. We have interactive map and we have shading macros. And we want it to find this data. And this is the tab shading macros. So we're going to simply type in the 
title of that tab. And so you'll just name it whatever you name your corresponding tab, okay? All right. Um, active sheet dot shapes range act reg dot value dot select keep that all of the same and so as long as you've followed my guide and, and name things appropriately act reg act reg value act reg code CLS values you named your tables right name this table reg data okay as long as you follow that you can keep all of this information in the macro uh, the same with the exception of the ones I pointed out so far okay all right, so selection, all of this, again, you can keep the same as long as you keep, you've keep kept the same names that I've shown you. All right. And then next I, keep that the same. Don't, don't concern yourself with the I. That is a macro um, uh, item that you don't have to worry about. Range, U21. Okay, so let me kind of go through what's going to happen here. Once you activate this macro, it's going to starting here okay so it's gonna say okay this is two million where does two million fall within this range all right so usually it's gonna be it's gonna follow that it's, it's gonna be the, the, the right below the number what I mean by that is so here's three million so it's gonna find one that's that's uh, equal to or less than this number in this case it's one right because that's the only number here, other than zero, of course, but the only number here that's equal to or less than two million. And so it's going to say, okay, so it, it follows in this range here. So it's a class one uh, shading, which is this color. And then it goes and it finds, in this case, Northern Ireland here, and then applies that shading. For Ireland, it will go and say, okay, where does this fall within this range? And you'll say it equal to, equal to or less than. So that is, in this case, 3 million, which is class 2, which is this shading. And it will apply it to Ireland here. So it goes through each one of your data points. And it does it so fast you can't see it, but it's actually doing it step by step. But what you have to tell it here is where do you want the cursor to stop? Um, at the end of the macro, all right? And where I want it to stop is somewhere where it's going to put me back in a position where the map kind of remains the same. And this will make more sense once we've created, uh, once we've implemented the macro and we run it. Um, so in this case, uh, just find a place on your, your, your spreadsheet that um, it's showing you everything you want to see. So I'm just going to say um, A5. And again, this will make a little more sense once we actually run this. So A5. And this A5 will correspond to this page, by the way. That's automatic. Okay, so we have the macro. It's applicable to all of our data sets. And uh, yeah, just to clarify too, one thing I didn't point out in the previous uh, video, you don't have to have all of these components the same exact position on your spreadsheet that I have in my mind. So for example, you know, this starts with E6. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, as long as you name all of your uh, your cells accordingly, okay, you got your classes here, you name this, your act reg, act reg value, etc. So you don't have to worry about um, what position in your spreadsheet all this data is located. As long as you've named it, the formula will tell it to go find the item that's named accordingly. Okay, so it's, it's going to search your whole spreadsheet, so you don't have to worry about that so much. All right, so we have the macro, and so now we are going to create it. We're going to copy straight from here. And so you can do this on a Word document or whatever um, and just copy. We will go to Developer, Macros. And we currently don't have any macros, but we're going to make a new one, and we're going to name it Shading, just like we did here. Click on Create. And then we're going to Paste. Okay. And so we have some duplication here, but that's okay. We can just take out these two items here. So we're going to make sure that the subshading only occurs once, and sub is only once as well. And so all of this, this is really the meat of your macro. And once you've done that, you can close. 
All right, so we've got the macro created. Now we need to tell Excel when to activate the macro. And the macro should activate each time you change the data set, right? So each time you make a selection in this box, we want it to go out and verify the data here, find the appropriate uh, range and appropriate shading, and then apply it to the individual countries or the shapes, okay? So we need to assign the macro to this selector box. And so you will right click on the selector box, assign macro, and in this case, there's just one shading, which is what we want. Click OK. And that should be it. And so what we've told it is that every time you change a value in the selector box, it's going to apply the appropriate shading based on the range. Just like that. Okay, so the last thing is to actually put in the range values here. And so we can apply those shadings. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And so you're just going to match whatever you have here. And then we need to put in the values. And so we know this value is always going to be zero, but what we can do is tie it back to these values here. So it will change based on uh, our selection. And so we can simply in this cell say equals this value, this one, equals this, Just clean that up a little bit. And so once you click on this, you'll notice it changes the values. Okay, so you remember when I was talking about uh, that last component of the formula where it's, it said U21 and we changed it to A5. And I did that because once the macro completes, you're telling it where to land the cursor, okay? And let's say... Um, you know, based on, let's hide this for a second. You know, based, you want to make sure that everything's showing up. Every time somebody clicks something, you want to make sure things don't move around. So maybe, you know, A13 is a better ending point. All right. So you can go back to the macro, click on it, edit, and then change it here. So I think we said 15, so change it to 15. And now, no matter where I click out here, watch what happens when I click on the macro. It always puts the cursor back on cell A15. And so maybe that's the best spot because that way uh, you're not cutting off uh, any portion of the map for you. And you have to play around with that and kind of see what works out for you. And that is the completion of part four and the entire series on completing the um, dynamic map in Excel. So hopefully this was not too difficult for you. Uh, feel free to uh, send me any comments or questions regarding uh, this. If you come across any issues, I'll do my best to respond to you. But I think if you watch through the videos and go through step by step on what I showed you, um, I think you should not have any problems. Uh, pretty straightforward. And you can do this with any size map with as many shapes as you're willing to uh, spend the time on.